Hi, Jeremy. Thank you so much for being a guest in the life of a social media manager. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm super excited to be here today to talk with you and the amazing Social Insider community. Um, but I am doing very, very well. Thank you. Thank you. Before to jump in and discuss about uh, your challenges as a social media manager, can you tell us can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, for sure. So I am currently the um, social media specialist um, at um, Swim Outlet, which is a big uh, e-commerce brand. Um, it sells swimsuits, um, all different types of brands. Um, and then we, I also help with our private label brand as well. Um, and I, I just got this position about four months ago. Um, and it marries two things that I love so much, which is swimming, which I've done most of my life, <laughs> and also social media, which I've also done most of my life. So that's a little bit about me. I live in um, Winchester, Virginia, um, close to the nation's capital, United States, uh, D.C. I'm about an hour from there. Um, mm -hmm. And I love just learning and growing about marketing, specifically social media, um, community building. I call myself a social media nerd. Um, mm -hmm. So I love just connecting and learning and growing about social media and digital marketing. How did you um, get this job? Because I think what you describe uh, that you have two passions, uh, one of them is swimming and the other one is social media. I think everyone who maybe they want to work in social, they prefer to um, work for a brand that mm -hmm. represents their passion. So do you have any hacks on how you, you um, obtained this job? Yeah, so, well, it's not really a hack. <laughs> it was very coincidental the way it kind of worked. Um, but just for a little more background and context, before getting this position, I also worked at a local museum for two and a half years, um, where I got that job through swimming as well. Um, I was coaching one of the daughters um, of the mom who's the chief marketing officer there. So mm -hmm. um, swimming has impacted my life a lot and even in the social media marketing ways. But from that point, I also started my own social media agency called Wholesome Media. Um, we're a small social media business. Um, my wife and I run that. She mainly takes care of a lot of that stuff though, um, since I have my full time. But, um, so that's a little more background as to, you know, how I kind of got involved in the social space, but how the swim outlet job came about was I also coach, um, I still mm -hmm. coach swimming and I'm still heavily involved in the swimming community. And one of our other coaches on our year round team, um, had said, Hey, I found this job that just came over Swim Swam, which is like a big swim news platform. Um, and it looks exactly like you. It pairs social media and marketing. Um, and so literally she sent me the job position. It was on the night of the national football game, um, college national championship. And I applied and a couple of weeks later, here we are. <laughs> so um, it wasn't really a hack, but... It was yeah. something that just came about. However, I would encourage people um, or those that want to get into social media um, to have an active presence, um, mm -hmm. to connect with people, uh, and, and that will help you get into different areas of social or specific positions that you're interested in. Yeah, and I think being offline, it's important to talk about uh, your passions because maybe sometimes... Maybe a person can 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 interact with you and can discuss about the position that they have in their companies or stuff like that. So it's important to Absolutely. speak about yourself uh, and about uh, the things that you love to do, you are interested to do. So, well, that's also that also brings up a good point, right, Adina? Like the the thing is is when somebody asks you, how are you doing? Or like, tell me a little bit about yourself. I feel like culture today, in my opinion, um, comes at it like, oh, I'm doing good. Mm -hmm. or, oh, um, you know, I I'm 25 years old and I live in blah, blah, blah. Instead mm -hmm. of really elaborating 
on, well, this is what I love and this is what I do and this is why I do it and, and that kind of thing. Um, do you feel that way? Do you feel that like, and, and I, I really think it's more so um, after COVID, that's the way it kind of has been. Like people are just less communicative um, yeah. offline. So I'm curious to know your thoughts on that. Like, is do you feel that way that, that people don't really share like their background as much or their passions? <laughs> I think it depends from country to country and from context to context. Um, when I'm in the, I don't know, in the, in the business context, usually people, um, they are willing to share what they are do, what they do, uh, what their plans, uh, what they love to do and stuff like that. Uh, but when, I don't know, when I'm traveling just as a tourist, I uh, sometimes I felt that when it comes to uh, when it comes to um, specific, uh, I'm I'm from Europe, Eastern Europe. So in Eastern Europe, usually people don't tend to share too much about the things they do. Uh, when I'm go to the uh, when I go to the uh, uh, West, I notice that. They are more eager to share um, okay. about the kids, about their families, um, yeah. their struggles, and I think it's quite a, a lesson for me to learn from uh, from them and to be more open about the things that I do. Because okay, we're all all of us are humans. We have problems. We have I don't know kids, family, yeah. dogs, cats, and <laughs> so on so at some point we have different challenges depending on what we, we are doing when i visited uh, the the united states i noticed that most of the people replied with i'm fine and that's it yeah. <laughs> uh, no I, I, okay so i didn't visit too much um uh, region in the United States. I was in California and usually wow. people uh, told me that I'm fine. I'm good for today. Thanks for asking. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, not, not too much talk about, I don't know, life in general. So right. I think it's depending from region to region, from people to people. But in the business context, uh, people usually, it doesn't matter where uh, where I was, they, they really told me, okay, I have problems with this. I would, I'm looking for some advice or stuff like that. So right, right. yeah. Awesome. But it, oh, it's, it, it's helpful to, to talk. Uh, mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if you approach to talk about your business or about your personal life. Right. Right. Okay. So coming back <laughs> a little bit and uh, discussing about, um, your struggles and the challenges that you have as a social media manager and social media specialist. Uh, can you tell me, I don't know, uh, how does, uh, what does a day in your life look like? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, well, it's, it's very multifaceted, right? I mean, as, <laughs> as social media managers and social media specialists, whatever you want to call us, um, you balance a lot. Right. And, and so I would say a day in a life for me, um, is I wake up, you know, get ready. Normally it doesn't take me very long to get ready, like maybe 30 minutes, <laughs> depending on the day. Um, and then I come in and the first thing that I normally do is open up my phone um, and check all of our social media platforms. Um, so for Swim Outlet, I run um, two Instagram accounts, two TikTok accounts, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, um, and um and so I go in and kind of just check to see what has happened on those pages, you know, whether it's checking comments, whether it's um, just seeing what's happening in the feed, whether it's checking DMs, um, you know, all these different assets I, I or these different attributes I go and look at and just check. Um, normally that takes me probably about an hour um, just because I really like to dive through it. After that, um, I tend to make sure that everything is either scheduled for today for all of those platforms, or I organically and naturally just post to our specific timeframes um, and, and just make sure the content is the way we want it and all that kind of stuff. Um, after that, I go to email 
Um, so then I start checking my email and, and just catching up on some of those different emails that have come in. And a lot of our team is based on the West Coast of the United States, um, PST time. So a lot of times when I'm getting to things, they might be just waking up. Um, mm -hmm. so that's why I try to wait to check my email and my G chat, you know, our chat channel, um, between our teams a little bit later, um, just because they're just starting to wake up in that, in those times. Um, but at that point, you know, then majority of the time I'm looking at our strategy, I'm, um, helping develop and consume content for paid social media strategy and for organic. I spend a lot of time consuming content to make sure that, we're creating content that is for our targeted audience. Um, a lot of times I feel like us as social media managers, we get this um, stereotype placed on us that we just play on social media all day. And there is some truth to that. We, we do spend a lot of time consuming content, but that's to really see what our targeted demographic and what our targeted consumer is doing and what they want. Um, so I spend a lot of time doing that. Um, I also spend a lot of time in meetings uh, because we're with Swim Outlet. We work with a lot of brands, um, very diverse brands in the swim industry. And, and so we do spend a lot of time working with those brands. Um, but I also might be spending some time traveling. I've been to California um, four times with the company so far with different launches that we're doing or um, different photo shoots that we have to get mm -hmm. and the social team comes to collect content, right? Um, so that's a little bit about a day in the life of what I do. And then honestly, you know, transparently social doesn't stop. So I, I tend to, right before I go to bed, um, I tend to check our socials again, um, just to make sure that, that everything is going the way it needs to go or that I didn't miss something that might be happening, you know, trending at that moment that we might need to jump on and, and, you know, do something with. So, um, you know, and, and again, though, you know, there's that balance, right, with being a social media manager. Yes, we say it's all the time, but it's also important to take time to chill out as well. But mm -hmm. that's kind of a long winded answer to your question. <laughs> Thank you. What's the ratio between the post that you published and the post that goes based on, I don't know, based on a trend or that things that you want to post now? You mean like have... between what I schedule and what we mm -hmm. like organically post? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so I would say um, for me, I'm newer into the position. So I tend to like to post organically just because I know that it's going out at that exact time. Like I've used scheduling platforms before, um, all of them really. I've used a lot of them. And, and so... and natively we've been using like the in-house um, Instagram scheduling and, and Facebook scheduling and stuff, but I'm, I'm just kind of like an anxious person sometimes. And, and so I tend to, I would say probably 80% of the time um, I post organically. However, on the weekends or that kind of thing, because we post over the yeah. weekend as well, I schedule all of that just so I can have a little bit of free time, you know, to myself really. Um, but, you know, on the other hand of that, I would say maybe it's more like 90% I, I do organically because on YouTube, Facebook Reels, and TikTok, I actually have to go into the app and push post um, for most of it. We don't really use a scheduling platform um, for those. So I would say probably 90% organically posting and then probably 10% mm -hmm. um, scheduled. Yeah, usually uh, I, this is my recommendation for brands specifically. So when you are you, when you are a social media manager working for a brand, it's important to go through the process and publish manually and organically and not scheduling those posts because it's important to, I don't know, to understand the mechanics, to understand what pl platform recommends you in terms of hashtags, in terms of what type of post, what type of um, um, media or collaterals you should use uh, for that uh, specific post. And of course, there are some um, rumors that usually the posts that are published manually compared to those schedule you can get a higher engagement rate we didn't look at data 
so far uh, for this uh, specific um, question, but uh, I know that uh, in our case for our LinkedIn page, it's better we get a higher engagement rate if we publish organically and not using even uh, the LinkedIn um, scheduling tool, which is um, their their app, the native app. Um, we observe that if we are active, we publish the post, we manually uh, publish the post. And if we are active on, on LinkedIn uh, in after the moment of publishing, we notice that somehow uh, LinkedIn uh, knows this and we got uh, some engagement likes based because we are on, on the page uh, in that moment. Yeah, maybe you can call us nerds. <laughs> we like to do a lot of experiments to understand the mechanics behind the platform. So we noticed uh, these things for LinkedIn specifically. Well, and also to echo that, you know, I've seen a lot on um, specifically Twitter. If you're active a little bit before you post, so mm -hmm. spend, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes engaging, retweeting, commenting, and then posting something, the exact same thing happens at Dima, but very similar. Like, it's like Twitter knew you were hanging out there and it started like feeding some stuff and then mm -hmm. it starts to really push um, okay. some of your content. So that's, that's definitely a strategy though, right? I mean, that's something that all of us social media managers and social people need to, to know. And, and, and I didn't even realize that for LinkedIn. So that's great. Yeah. That's great. I, it's difficult to do this when you are, I don't know, at the, working for an agency and you have multiple clients with different time zones and stuff like that. Maybe in this case, it's difficult to manage this. But when you are an in-house social media manager, it's important to do this stuff like this to understand the, the platform mechanics. Mm -hmm. um, and sure. now I, I will... Uh, um, give this insight to my team to make sure that they are active before publishing on <laughs> on Twitter. Yeah. So what skills do you believe are essential for success in these roles? Oh, geez. Oh, my goodness. Um, what skills do I think? What skills? Well, I think the first one is you got to be you got to be on your toes. You got to be like ready to adapt and kind of move and, and maneuver through different things. Um, again, if you're working for specifically, you know, I can only say to what I've worked in, but if you're working with an e-commerce brand, things are changing constantly. Um, even with whether, you know, what brands you're working with or something in the news might pop up and, and you need to jump on it or, um, you know, th there's just so, so many different things that, that go on. Um, so I would say the first skill that you probably need to have is being uh, adaptable. Um, the second skill I think you need to have is, um, being on time. Uh, and, and that's, I think a lifelong skill <laughs> that you need to have, but in terms of social, it's really important to be on time and, and be, um, very aware of time management and that kind of stuff. Um, because I also think, yes, you need to be on time for meetings and for social posts and all of that for contextual purposes. But I think it's also important to be on time with knowing when enough is enough and you need to kind of take a step back and, and take personal time. Um, mm -hmm. I think that's super important and, and really something that social media managers tend to push to the side because we want to make sure that our boss is happy, our, our corporate is happy, our, um, our company, our CEO is happy. Um, but it's also, they also want us to be happy in what we're doing and not get burnt out. So just being aware of your time and that kind of stuff as well. And then the third skill that I think is um, probably the most important um, and something really to, to think about is is making sure that you're willing to experiment um, and, and take feedback after experimenting. Um, because I, I'll i say myself, I, I tend to take things personally sometimes. That's just my character. That's the way I was built. Um, and I've had to learn through my journey, you know, seven years in this industry that, you know, 
it's okay to, to experiment and fail. It's okay mm-hmm. to experiment and fail, but also then have your boss come to you and say, and pick your brain. Why did, why did this not work? Why did this not happen? Or, Hey, this creative really wasn't that good. Like that's why it failed or whatever it might be. Um, but I think that's really important for us as social media managers, because again, these platforms are changing constantly. Our consumer base is changing um, all the time and what they like and what they want. And so if we can constantly experiment with them um, and learn from that um, and not take it to heart, I, I think that's a huge asset um, to any marketing team. Um, so those would be the three the three um, attributes that I think are super important to being a social media manager. Yeah. And I, you mentioned that it's important to take a break to make sure that you have somehow a balance between being online and being offline or switching to everything to something else that uh, you are passionate about it. Because I think it's uh, important to know that to set boundaries and to know that okay i can do this until this time i will do this i don't know until 6 6 p.m and then i can switch and to something else where i prefer to uh, disconnect from the online stuff and connect with something that i love the most or maybe i love the same it's important to um, to have this shift and to consider this How do you develop and execute social media strategies for Swim Outlet? How do I develop and execute social strategies? Well, the the first thing I do is I run everything through our director of social media and influence. Um, Him and I work very closely together on creating these strategies. Um, And honestly, where it stems from is... The, the, the main place where it stems from is understanding your customer. <laughs> um, that's, that's the first step in developing any social media strategy, in my opinion. Um, you have to know your targeted audience, but you also have to know what I like to call, and I'm sure you're familiar with this too, Adina, is your buyer persona, the person that you actually want to buy from you. That's, that is not your targeted audience, right? That's, Those are two different things. Your buyer persona is where you want to go. Your targeted audience is what you already have. Um, So I think it's really important to really know your current audience um, and then what your buyer persona is and where you want to go, what you want that ideal consumer to look like, and then build your social strategy off of that. Um, and, And so that's kind of the way that, that I think of social um, in terms of building a strategy. And then obviously layer fold, once you know your audience, then where are they hanging out? What platforms, um, what type, you know, what do they like to consume? How long is it? All of that. Then the third tier to that is what type of content do they like? Um, is it written? Is it video? Is it blah, blah, blah. Um, and, and then build up from that. And that's data, right? H- how can we, collect data that helps inform us of what we're doing um, and informing us of what our audience is doing, maybe even what our competitors are doing um, to see how we can better and start from the beginning that social strategy that we developed from the beginning. Because also, you know, we might build a social media strategy, right, Adina, but then three months later, we might have to change it because things are shifting and, and all of that. So again, that's kind of that experimentation that I was talking about that I think is really important for social media managers. Um, but that's kind of how we build social strategy. Um, but it's all focused strictly around, again, your targeted audience, but also the future, your buyer persona as well. So Yeah. I have a story here. Uh, we had to change somehow the strategy that we have for our Instagram profile. Uh, we started, uh, I don't know, last year and this year with so many uh, video content, reels content. And we noticed that, uh, okay, they are good for getting impressions and somehow uh, people can see our brand. But in other ways, they don't interact with us. So uh, these reels um, don't generate um, comments, saves, 
so in our case, because we want to get some feedback for, for the community to understand if we are on the right track, we yeah. had to change, um, even though, and we noticed that based on data that carousel are, are slightly getting back. So for some specific brands, carousels delivers a higher engagement rate, a higher comment rate. So that's why we chose to um in the, for our for our instagram we chose to mix and add more carousels than reels mostly because our objective is to get saves and to get comments for for the community and engagement basically so um depending on what you have as a business or, or the the, uh, the business goal that you have for that specific platform even even though the uh, sometimes the platform promotes something and push something else, make sure that it's a it's you get the results that you want for your business. Right. So it's important to have uh, this this me these things and look at data when creating the strategy. Absolutely. How do you keep? Uh, how do you keep users engaged and active for the uh, profiles that you manage? Yeah, so that's a good question. And we're really experimenting with this right now with um, Swim Outlet and our other private label brand as well. Um, so the, the way that we're really focusing in on engaging our community is our community is um, individuals like 18 to, or no, excuse me, 12 to like 18 year old, 20 year old um, females mostly. Um, so they're wanting and what we've seen that they're wanting is like funny content and they're wanting content that showcases the swimsuits right so we've really focused on creating goofy funny content that basically almost makes fun of some swimmers like makes fun of the swim community or plays a part in something goofy a coach might do um so these are different things that, that we do to spark a conversation or spark um, a, a thought. Um, comedy is huge in some of the stuff that we've done, but, but also in terms of you know, um, engaging the community in the comments, um, we, we tend to do these types of videos where it's like five different types of like swimmers on your swim team or five foods that you eat at a swim meet. Um, and then ask, you know, at the end, um, you know, what do you eat or what type of swimmer are you? And then the comments just start going crazy, right? Because all these kids want to say what type of swimmer they are and all this kind of stuff. Um, and then, you know, I spend a lot of time our strategy is um, or a piece of our strategy. And what I would encourage every social media manager to do is engage back with the people that are commenting on your platforms. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. Don't just post and leave them high and dry. That's a terrible way to manage your social, your, to manage your social media platforms, in my opinion. Um, so then it's spending time engaging with them. So that's kind of, big picture, you know, what we do and what I think easily can be done by other social media specialists and managers as well. Yeah. Yeah. Don't be a ghost, be present, be active in those social platforms. So even though they, I don't know, they gave you, um, uh, emoji or a simple, some simple words, hopefully not a bot, um, reply to those comments and uh, engage with them. And the, the other thing too, really quickly, do you know if I could, is um, for Wholesome Media, when we were building that um, brand and, and we're still in the process of doing that, we've had a huge shift in that as well. Um, but even in building that brand, one thing that we really focused on with growing and engaging that community is specifically showcasing us as who we exactly are, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and what I mean by that is, is, what you see right now and what the social insider community is seeing from Jeremy is genuinely who I am on my social media platforms. That's who we are as wholesome media. Um, and so that's something else that I think is really important to think about when 
especially if you're a social media manager for an up and coming brand or a, a new startup, I think it's pivotal that you make sure that you are expressing yourself and the brand as purely as themselves as possible. Um, do not try to be a brand that you're not. Do not try to be something that you aren't because that's very detrimental, especially when you're trying to build um, a, a brand up. And, and so I just wanted to say that I think that's really important to showcase um, you know, genuinely who you are as a person so that when a company wants to work with you, if you're an agency or something, they already know what they're getting because they've already seen your pure self on your social channels. So um, I think that's a, a big part of it as well. Yeah, I think usually in the early days, your brand means equal means the the C level people, the founders, the people that uh, the managing the people that are managing the, that agency or that business because. Uh, you are the image of that uh, of that business so people want to know that's why it's important to show your face to be human to be present on the brand channels and to respond to comments to be engaging with uh, with your communities because people will want to buy from you because they right. saw what uh, they they engage with you they already know you they know that at some point they can come to you and ask some questions because they have some, I don't know, questions regarding the product, the services. So it's important to you as a founder be the image for, for the brand, for the product yeah. or the services that you are selling. Absolutely. And I think at some point, this is the difference between a smaller businesses and uh, enterprise uh, enterprise companies. Because at that, le at that level, at some point, the CEO cannot be uh, on social, so uh, close to, to, to the community, right, at least right. not right, uh, right now. I, I think I don't have an example in my mind, except the, uh, the CEO of TikTok, uh, once, they, once he had the Congress uh, meeting, after that, uh, after that meeting, he, he was so active on TikTok, uh, engaging with community and um, com communicating about the struggles that he he's, uh, was facing uh, at that time. Well, and, and on top of that too, you know, I, I can think of another brand that does this really well is um, it's a guy by the name of Gary Vaynerchuk. I'm sure mm -hmm. you, you've heard of him. Yeah. yeah. And he has VaynerX, um, but he does an incredible job of staying very present on his social media platforms. And, and obviously he has a team, which he's, he's, he's said that and all of this stuff, but um, you know, I, I personally think it's really important. I, you know, I don't care. And it, this is just my opinion, but I don't care if you have 500 people that you're managing, if you're the CEO of the company um, and you are, you built up this brand and you're representing this brand you need to be connecting with the community digitally. I just personally feel that way. I know it might be extremely difficult in some situations, right? Because you are doing so many things, but I think only, only is it relevant um, to do that. I mean, look at society right now, 2023. We, we want to connect with people and we want to buy from people. We don't yeah. really care. We really don't care about a logo. Um, to yeah. An extent. Um, yeah. We want to connect with you. Uh, we want to connect with the, the owner. And that also makes us feel heard as consumers. So I think that's really important. Um, again, it's something that I would echo in any company is try to get yourself out there as much as possible or be on the platforms at least. Um, I think that's super important. So Yeah, and now with so many changes on LinkedIn, because I feel that with the with all the things that happening with Twitter, most of the founders and C-level people uh, are now present, are now more present on LinkedIn. And I think it's useful and the, the platform is so useful to showcase your work, to showcase your values, to showcase your business. So it's important to, and the platform supports you right now, LinkedIn to, to be more active uh, there. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Uh, how do you measure success on social these days? 
Oh man. <laughs> um, if you if you look at data. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, obviously we look at data, right? And and I think that's really important. But I I also you know I just got my master's degree a year and a half ago um, from the College of William and Mary, and I'm very grateful for the amazing professors there. And and one of them in particular, my data analytics professor, said to me. He he said to the class one day. He said, you know. It's, it's really good to collect data. Um, it, it's really good to have all of these things set in place to, to measure success. But if you can only measure success, um, but not make decisions to better improve what it is that you're doing, then the data is irrelevant. What you're doing is irrelevant. And so one thing that he said, and it will forever stick with me, and whenever I get asked this question, this is what I say, is there's a huge difference between collecting data and measuring success and then utilizing data to make data-driven decision-making. Yeah. Um, I think that's super important. I think as I'm 25 years old, and so as any young social media manager or any social media for that matter, um, manager, you need to make sure that you are not just collecting data because that's not the point. The point is using and leveraging the data to make data-driven decisions. <laughs> and, and so yeah. how do I measure success um, specifically with Swim Outlet? You know. We look at video views very specifically, and we look at engagements very specifically. Um, so those are our two like main metrics. If people, if our viewership is up and people are spending a lot of time on our videos, then what we're doing is working. Um, we also spend a lot of time in our stories, um, our Instagram stories specifically, tracking link clicks um, because again, we're an e-commerce brand, so we got to push sales, and so. We spend a lot of time tracking, well, how many people clicked on this? How many people engaged with this story? How many people, you know, blah, 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 blah. So I would say engagement metrics are super important to us, but also video views. Um, and we leverage video hugely for Swim Outlet. Um, in terms of wholesome media side of things, um, we, a lot of the times we're tracking impressions and followers. Um, I know followers are, I don't like to say track followers all the time because I don't think that that's always super important, but it's something to think about if you're wanting to grow your brand presence yeah. in your community. Um, but impressions are really important. Reach is really important. Um, those are just a couple of metrics that I would say, but I want to really bring it home with those metrics are all great to track. That's nice. But you need to make sure that you understand what is happening to make decisions off of that um, to better your strategy. So um, social media managers make data driven decisions. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. I think you said better than me. Uh, so it's important to look at data, but also also to write down some actionable insight based on that data and go to implement, execute that strategy and then came back and look again at data and understand if there was a change in, in the KPIs that you are tracking. So yeah, it's a one way of looking at data, but the other way is to make sure that create uh, messages based on that data, create the posts, the, uh, the creatives on social based on, on the data. Well, and then also too, right, I think it's also important that a lot of the times, you know, we like to say, check your data, you know, monthly or, you know, whatever. Well, very transparently, we're switching that with, well, we're looking to switch that with Wholesome Media um, because normally we did data reports every month. And since I've worked at Swim Outlet, realistically, you need to work, you need to look at data every week to see what your content is doing. Um, and I know for some that may be very difficult because you're doing a lot of different things. Um, but if you're pumping out a lot of content like we are with Swim Outlet, then you really need to be looking yeah. at what's what's happening with it. Um, and, and so 
if that's checking it weekly, then you need to do that. Uh, yeah. So anyway. Yeah, and then I noticed from from the um, clients that we have that are using Social Insider, we noticed that most of the B two C clients are using every day the reporting. They are looking every day at the reports. They want to understand if a post is working, and if not, they want to change that the um, the posting for tomorrow. So maybe for those who are heavy on social and for those who are targeting B2C e-commerce um, brands, they are more uh, interested to, to look at data on a daily basis. Yeah. Absolutely. So Jeremy, thank you so much for, for sharing uh, all, uh, all the insights uh, with, uh, with me and with uh, everyone who is listening this podcast episode. Uh, can you tell me where people can find you? Yeah, for sure. So it's going to be a bunch of different places. <laughs> um, obviously, you can. I, I'm on Twitter a lot. I love Twitter. I'm on Instagram. Both of those are um, Lindenberg underscore Jeremy. But also, I would love for you guys. Um, we're growing our brand over at Wholesome Media as well. So you can find us on Twitter and Instagram there at Wholesome underscore Media. Um, I would love to connect with all of you. And then obviously, if any of you are swimmers or like the swim industry or whatever, please go follow us on TikTok and Instagram um, at Swim Outlet um, or at Sporty. Thank you. Thank you so much. All these links will be included in the description on every platform where uh, you are listening this podcast episode. So thank you so much uh, for being with me, Jeremy, and uh, yeah, you. see you soon.